Deadline is reporting that J.D. Dillard, whose directorial feature Slate impressed critics at Sundance last year, is in negotiations to direct and co-write a remake of The Fly for 20th Century Fox. David Cronenberg's 1986 horror classic, which starred Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis, was itself a remake of the 1958 version. Sources for Deadline are saying that Fox is looking at this new remake as a franchise starter. No word yet on a release date. Schnepp, buy or sell a remake of The Fly. First of all, let me wish David Cronenberg a very happy, happy 74th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Is it his birthday? Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday, man. That's Here's right. your news for today. Why did Long Jeremy get a fist bump flesh. for somebody else's birthday? Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew who I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. Cronenberg, the fly. Yeah, but, like, to be honest, his 74th birthday, I heard, is just a reboot of his 73rd. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this very all special, all reboot version of Movie Talk, <laughs> which we're doing today, I'm going to buy this reboot. Why? Because, look, the fly came out, like, I think it was 1980. What did they say the year was for the, the Cronenberg? 86. 86. Yeah. yeah, and that was based on a remake from the 50s. Now, they had done the same exact thing with The Thing, the original film, film which was based off a short yeah, story. Yeah, a lot of people realize that The Carpenter's yeah, The is Thing a remake. is not the original. Yeah. Yeah. That itself is a remake. Yeah, and so, you know, then they did a, a kind of a redux of that, like not even a remake, but like do, do the thing that came out like in 2011 was supposed to be a prequel. Whatever. I mean, I'm just saying, mostly it's it works when it's about 25 to 30 years old. I think it's time to do a remake or a reboot. With The Matrix, the very last Matrix, I think, came out in 2004. So it still feels too fresh to do a, rem a remake. Well, that's why I like incorporating it, making a further sequel. I think it could work with The, with the Matrix if they do it right. Um, with The Fly, it's about time. And look at what they could do with The Fly, all the different the, the things that we've already uh, gone through with technology. That's what The Fly is always about. It's like transformation. And so there's like a brand new story that can be told about somebody getting turned into a fly. I don't know what they're going to do, but it sounds horrible. I totally, I buy this. Yeah. Why not? Take a shot at it. You know what? The Fly is one of the, one of the great examples of the arguments I always make with people when people say, you should never do remakes. The Fly, <clears throat> The Thing, yep. Scarface. Oh, yeah. All remakes. The ones that you think are the classic should never be. Those themselves are remakes. Why not take any, one of the kind of rules I have for whether or not something should be done as a remake is can it benefit? Can that particular story benefit from modern technology? The Fly? Absolutely you can. Are you going to get Jeff Goldblum again? Pro you probably won't get somebody to give that kind of amazing performance that Goldblum did. But, hey, make him pop up in the movie. That would be great, too. So, for me, i buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is like an endurance test, talking about reboots that we're not sure if we want. And then you get something like The Fly. Then I'm going to buy it, too. I mean, I love this story. I caught the 58 version recently. I think it's on Netflix. And it's just, it's such a fascinating premise. And I love that Twilight zone -y feel of the first one and where they took the second one with all the cool practical effects that Cronenberg was able to employ. I'd love to see this story told again. I, I, I think both the 86 and the 58 version are classics in very different ways. I'd love to see them incorporate elements of both into this new one, as well as put an original spin on it. This guy who wants to do a reboot seems like he's a hot property in Hollywood right now, so I'm all two thumbs up. Jeremy, I have a, a sense that you're going to be disappointed by everybody so far. Yeah, no, I'm not disappointing anyone. Everyone has their reasons, and hey, the cheese will stand alone in the fact that I'm going to sell this just because I think uh, I, uh, The Fly is one of the, the great horror films that's really a character study. It of, really is, yeah. Of, uh, because, I mean, the villain is the hero. What you thought was the hero is the villain and vice versa. I think it's, it's just a really fascinating movie. I do agree that they can show some really cool stuff with technology with the transformation of him turning into a fly in that that's the one reason I would want to see this. But I feel like the performance... Spoiler alert, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert, he turns into a fly. <laughs> but, uh, 30 years nice. ago, kids. <laughs> yeah, I actually put on the spoiler alert. Right? Um, but uh, but I, I just think Goldblum as Seth Brundle brought to, uh, although it is a Re, a reboot. I felt like what he did with the fly is took took something that shouldn't have been great and turned it into a great performance. I don't think we're going to get that kind of cap. We'll we'll get a technology bump, but we're not going to get a premise or acting bump. I don't think. Call me the pessimist. Usually I'm the optimist. It's like, well, until they prove me wrong, I'm going to buy it. But in this one, I'm going to sell it because I don't think they can make a remake of the fly that's better than the fly we have. Can I give you Nicolas Cage as Seth Brundle and you buy it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would buy it. I, I would buy it. Nick, I would yeah, actually I would buy that. Nick Cage in 97, I would have. <laughs>